I can really focus on when I think we got serious about meeting and yeah. moving forward. Um, we had grown, I would guess at the time it was middle 60s. Dad yeah. was still alive. Yeah, right oh yes. And uh, uh, it was, uh, we, were, we had grown pretty fast, met a lot of success, getting a lot of adulation all over the place about how great we were. We were beginning <laughs> to believe it. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> but there were there were signs of growing pains all over the place, and I know my in my gut it was these people we pick for supervisors around here don't have it. We got to get the system in here, so we shape them up, and they learn how to uh, do things right. So we had heard about a man named Gordon Quimby from the from uh, Clyde, Ohio, who was a HR specialist with the Whirlpool Corporation. And we heard that he moonlighted and did things, you know, help uh, teach leadership. We're going to shape up our people. So we met with him and liked him. Uh, we took him on to meet off-site in, uh, I think, the, in a motel that had a meeting room that worked. Those meetings went on for nine or ten months, and Gordon uh, asked if he could meet with our management team. Now, our management team was my dad and John and Tom and myself who got together in dad's sunroom and chinned things over on Saturday morning. Okay. <laughs> there, there, was, there was no agenda, no minutes, believe me. And, of course, we talked about good news in those meetings. And, uh, and, and we were doing well, but the signs of problems were certainly evident everywhere. And uh, so Gordon asked if he could meet with us. And he, I'll never forget seeing him walk in quietly, sat down, and he, he said, I've been with your people now going on a year. And he says, I think I got a lot of insight into your company. And I was expecting another flowery pitch, you know. And he says, I think I could describe your company in two words, mass confusion. <laughs> and uh, boy, that got us focused. Hey, but he went on. He said, you know, your people really respect you. They they like working for you, but uh, you're not giving them a piece of the action. You're just, you're making all the decisions yourself and telling everybody what to do by the minute instead of saying in broader terms. He says, what you need to do is you need to set out some objectives that everybody can understand and go along with. The first thing you need to do is sit down. Well, what are you about? Why should these people be excited about working here? And that's I think that was the, that was the charge we had as we started to meet. We said, okay, let's let's meet. We met every week for quite a while, many many months. And I remember those early discussions. Well, why are we here? You know, and and we we rolled back to our catechism. At uh, St. Joe's, you know, why did God make me? It ought to work in the company, and it ought to work here in my life every day. It ought to work in church, and it ought to work everywhere. And that, the Catechism said, God made me to know, love, and serve Him in this world, and be happy with Him forever in the next. That was pretty solid. Now, what we do here does it vary from that at all? Nope, but we better focus it a little bit if we're going to compete in the world, you know. And I think I think that was the essence of how that statement of principles began to take shape. 